Los Angeles, California, a city of beauty, sky rises, and some of the world's most popular attractions, but we never mention homelessness. It's that eyesore that no one wants to discuss. People who have lost their lives, loved ones, and their minds each have a story. I guess all my life, toda mi vida ha estado aquí. ¿Y cómo fue que te quedó aquí? Este, pues ya, ya, ya estoy grande. Uh, ya, ya no tengo familia. Uh, ya, así, así ando, de un día al otro. Este, sí tenía casa y todo. Y, también trabajaba pero part time uh -huh. just uh, para mí fue para comer y, yeah. y comprar ropa y whatever uh, pero ya leer un bailero ya no hay trabajo y, y ya no ya no pues ya estás grande y, y, uh, like, y your parents that your parents are old already you know so it's like you gotta leave or do something you know so I just left I leave or, o me mandan a otro lugar a ver si, si hacemos algo pero nada siempre sale igual no hacemos nada According to Movoto.com, after a census taken in 2011, California is number four in the U.S. for homelessness. In a recent poll by the New York Times, it has grown 43% in the past five years, a key issue that has yet to be addressed. An issue also covered in the Los Angeles Times is how the county of LA refuses to aid the mentally challenged homeless. It's nearly impossible for someone with a college degree to receive enough pay to sustain a living in LA. Imagine being bipolar, schizophrenic, and homeless. You'll be lost in the system quicker than you arrived inside of it. Driving around Oakland, Riverside, and even downtown LA by the shopping centers, you'll see tents, signs, and even families hoping for monetary blessings. Then, the worker at Gateway can explain all of this in much more detail. For our interview, we went to a mental health facility that associates themselves with homeless services called Gateway. We spoke with a man named Ben, who refused, of course, to be on video, but we got our audio anyway. He discussed with us the details of what their clients were like, the process in which they receive housing, as well as their mental state and why it is that he personally feels it's extremely difficult for those with mental disabilities to have stable homes. Okay, so our clients are all adult, uh, mentally ill. Um, and for Department of Mental Health terms, that's 25 to 59, although we do have some what we call TAY, uh, transitional age youth. These are 18 to 25. They're all chronically uh, mentally ill. Um, often many years of um, severe mental illness. This can be schizophrenia or uh, major depression usually a bipolar disorder and their uh, symptoms impair their ability to maintain a residence uh, to obtain employment. Um, our typical client, I mean right now we have 180, uh, we probably wow. over the year, over, on an average year we treat 500 different you know unique individuals. Um, so our say I'd say our average client is someone who's 35, 40. Uh, tenth grade education is good. Wow. 
um, and with um, a, like I said, long history of uh, mental illness. Chronic unemployment, they're actually unemployable. Um, they really can't, my opinion is, is that they're sort of, besides having the mental illness that they do, they're sort of our, uh, they're lost in our um, um, economy. Um, they don't have the skills to even understand that they have to take direction from a supervisor. So then we do the treatment plan and, you know, again, psych meds, um, housing, income, and uh, symptom reduction. So we start to work with them on managing their symptoms. Um, so, you know, for example, someone who's convinced that they don't want to be in an apartment because the FBI bugs everybody's apartments, you know that, don't you? Okay. Um, so, and they don't have an iPhone because everyone knows that the government mm -hmm. knows what you're talking about, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to have an iPhone. So you start to work with those, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and kind of help them. So support their their feeling state, but not their delusion. During this assignment, I have definitely realized that one of the key things we need is a little more structure down by Skid Row. When I was down there recording my videos, I saw a lot of police officers mostly sleeping in their cars. There were fights going on, nothing was being regulated, people's tents were being torn. We need a little bit more organization. A big thing I learned from doing, or the experience with this project was that um, LA definitely needs to work on affordable housing for people who become homeless because of things that they can't control, like their health and um, sicknesses. Overall, I feel like we learned a lot from this project. We learned that there are resources for the mentally ill that are homeless. And we also learned that from our interview with Michael that he knows about resources that he could go to, like shelters and like food banks, but he refuses to go to them. Um, and overall, this project went really well for us.